right, Dari, thank you very much. We're at Sun Life Stadium for Miami. It is its ACC opener already here in the first week of October. Georgia Tech playing its fourth conference game of the season. Here is Smelter fielding a kickoff for the first time as a Georgia Tech Yellow Jacket. And the Yellow Jackets will start at their own 25-yard line fumble. <laughs> Lead a Smelter on first down, and Smelter tripped up by Ladarius Gunter. That's Deion Hill in motion. It's Sims straight ahead. And he's met by that Miami defensive line, which is vastly improved from a season ago. And, and I think that stopping the Georgia Tech on the first possession was paramount. Big third down. Lee options it off. That's Deion Hill, his first carry since the season opener. And he's into hurricane territory after a 24-yard pickup finally brought down by Tracy Howard. Lee options again. This time he'll keep it, and he's gobbled up for a loss. Hello. Robert got high in motion. He gets it on the toss. Got high. He's got great speed to the outside. And a big pickup finally tripped up by Denzel Perryman, a gain of 10. A great second down play. Once again, they're in their wheelhouse with third and short. Likely four down territory. Sims the B-back. This will be close. Depends on the spot, but it looks like he's going to be stopped short. And the Yellow Jackets able to move the chain. Lee will keep it on the option, and that time he stopped right at the line of scrimmage, converging that time Curtis Porter and Denzel Perryman last play, so he's got to come out by rule. High snap. This is Dion Hill, and running with purpose inside the 20-yard line. A first down for the yellow. The diamond shape in the backfield. Dennis Andrews fighting for the extra yards. Perryman in on the stop as Andrews pushes across the 15, a gain of six. On the 11th play of the drive, David Sims. And he's close to a first down, tackled again by Perryman. We've called Perryman's name quite a bit for Miami. Statistically a year ago. We think they're improved, but we'll see. Here's Sims, eludes one tackler, and into the end zone, Georgia Tech on the board, and Miami trails for the first time in 2013. Sims to just follow his blocking up outside. The true freshman, Harrison Butker, on for the point after. And it's good, the Yellow Jackets march 75 yards in 12 plays. David Sims. Brian did, but Georgia Tech was certainly up to the task. Here is the dangerous Duke Johnson. Crowd saying Duke. And Johnson tripped up as he crosses the 25-yard line. Already, I watched him come out of the field, and he's still gimpy. He had a great week of practice, but we certainly need to keep an eye on that right angle. Here's Duke Johnson on first down. He's got home run ability, and Johnson into the secondary across midfield. Nice little stutter step and out of bounds near the 40-yard line. A gain of 33 yards for El Duque. And the order of the day is to get El Duque the ball early and often. His workload was pretty good in game one, but it's diminished the next couple of games, and they need to get him lathered up early here this afternoon. Play action. Morris downfield for Dorsett. Touchdown, Miami. You see the stack release, and then Phillip just goes. Dorsett goes outside, throws over top of the coverage, middle open for the quarterback. 
tells Morris that I have a skinny post. Dorsett made a great catch. Wow, that didn't take long. We're seeing a contrast in styles right from the get-go. Georgia Tech methodically marching the ball down 12 plays and 75 yards. Miami, two plays, 73 yards in 32 seconds. DeAndre Smelter, former Georgia Tech baseball player, takes it across the 20 yard line. And he's to the 24 yard line. Smelter taking kicks with Jamal that Golden. Seam on that touchdown in the stacked release. The inside receiver is going to occupy the safety there. And Dorsett is going to really run a skinny post, which what essentially is the middle open. That's exactly what Moore sees, and then a beautiful Outside, ball. Kicking thing number 21. Well executed Five by Miami. To added to the end of the run. To First down. And they like to go vertical, but you don't know which one is going where. Bad lead of DeAndre Smelter. That's just how Georgia Tech started their first drive of the game. Smelter picks up two. Smelter. The game, it doesn't take you long as a quarterback to find that guy. Here's a toss to Dennis Andrews. And he crashes across the 35-yard line for a game of five. And how well does Georgia Tech block on the perimeter? Right now, they're doing both really well. There's a toss to Godhide to the outside. He averages about 10 yards per carry. And he looks to be stopped short of the first down marker. This could right depend here on the spot. Is running that alley if you're the quarterback and keeping the ball. He keeps it now options to Dion Hill who's had a strong start and Hill close to midfield a gain of 10. In the triple option you have all kinds of read keys. You have the dive right there. That means no to the fullback and so he takes it outside and then you can see right there that means no to the quarterback so he pitches the football. And you have to do that with timing and with rhythm and bad least doing a pretty nice job so far. Hill with 47 yards already in the game, and that last rush, good for a first down. Up the middle to the fullback, Zach Lasky. He was the team's leading rusher a year ago, and he gets two on first. Lasky once more, and he gets maybe a yard. It'll bring up third and seven. Denzel Perryman. In on the stop, he's had a strong first quarter for Miami, number 52. Yeah, he's a beast. At six feet, 240 pounds, he put on about 30 pounds from a year ago, and the, he was actually playing inside, which was not his natural position. But Jimmy Gaines was banged up. Second half of the season, Gaines comes back. They can move Perryman outside, and their defense was a lot better the second half of the year. Lee over the middle, that's caught by Godhai, and it's a first down for Georgia Tech. Charles Perkins into the game for the first time as one of the A-backs. Those are the running backs that line up to either side of the quarterback. This is Godhai, and he's taken down along that far sideline. When he gets downfield. Here's Lee on the option, and he's tackled after a gain of two. In on the stop that time, Thurston Armbrister. And Kelly, Thurston Armbrister was named by his grandma, who was a big Gilligan's Island fan. No, she don't named do that. him after Thurston Howell the third, aka the Once billionaire. Once you name him, it doesn't really matter. It works. Leon third down, in some trouble, chased by Chicolo, and driven out of bounds. Fourth down, Georgia Tech. When you do the math, and the people who do the math, have done the math. I think the math right here is trying to draw them off sides. Uh, Miami was disciplined. That's a good job by them right there. Butker's kick. Hugs that upright, and it's good from 45. And Georgia Tech retakes the lead 10 to 7. Dorsett has Miami's first touchdown in Duke. He's dangerous on kick returns. 
has three kick returns in his career of at least 95 yards. Johnson won't get a chance here. Into and out of the end zone. Miami ball from its own 25-yard line. Right now, we check in with Dorian. Stacy Coley, the true freshman on first down. And Coley picks up a first down across the 35-yard line. He gets a dozen in. You look at Speed Miami's three out plays. in space, and Miami has that in droves offensively. The order of the day for Georgia Tech is just to try to keep the ball in front of them, kind of that shell look on the back end. Second carry of the game for Duke Johnson eludes Jeremiah Atauchu. And Johnson down inside the 50, the ball comes out. Georgia Tech appears to have it, and they do. Now coughs it up, trying to extend the play for more yards. And when you're a running back that has a growing reputation of not hanging on to the football, the defenses are aware of that. And that's exactly what D.A.K. did on that particular play. Once he got to the ball, it's about ripping it away if a running back has a reputation of not having great ball security. Once again, Duke Johnson Hurricanes did it. turn it over four times. Low snap, David Sims has got Georgia Tech's touchdown in this game. And they blow the whistle, give him three yards. Up the middle, this is Sims, and Sims spins his way down inside the 35-yard line. Give him 19. Back right off his tail. Brun did a very nice job from his left guard position. Lee options to his right. Pitches to Charles Perkins. There goes Perkins into the end zone. Touchdown Tech. From the Virginia Tech game. And for Perkins, that's his second touchdown of the year. 17 to 7. This Yellow Jackets offense, which really struggled Let's against the momentum. They're going to be reckoned with before the season is out. Duke Johnson, a yard into his own end zone. Johnson across the 40, and he's down at about the 43-yard line, a 44-yard return. There at Vanderbilt, at Texas. Auburn, Gus Malzahn has it going there. They'll score some points, there's no doubt. Yeah, he came back, and the offense started to click again. Here's Duke Johnson, and he gets right back to the line of scrimmage. Second down and 10. Morris to the air, and that's intercepted. Picked off by Chris Milton. So Miami has turned it over on two of its last three plays. The receiver is being taken downfield by a defender underneath with a safety over the top. Right here, he's going to get down the field, but this safety is never really challenged. That tight end has someone running with him, a linebacker underneath. That window should never be tested with that tight coverage underneath with the safety right over top of him. Poor decision by Morris. To Stephen Morris that you have a safety standing right on the hash. You can't lead your tight end into that safety. Here's David Sims on first down, and he's across midfield for a gain of five. Sims that time stopped right at the line of scrimmage. It'll bring up third down Curtis Porter. One of the two they didn't get, they made up for with a fourth down conversion. And Porter is one of those guys, that defensive tackle, 6'1", 325. He has to be the guy that takes away the fullback when they come his direction, and that was a great job of it on that last play. Lee will keep it. Bad Lee breaks the tackle, and he appears to be down just shy of the first down marker. Denzel Perryman again on the stop, and it's fourth down for the Yellow Jackets. 
Here's the toss. Tony Zenon picks up a first down, and Georgia Tech moves the chains. He's not lined up right. Lee pitches to B.J. Bostic, and Bostic dives across the 35 to the 34-yard line. Give him six. Georgia Tech's wide receiver. The Yellow Jackets, 168 yards on the ground, and nine different players have carried the football. That's Zach Lasky, and he tumbles down close to the 30. We check in with what Nikki. with the Canes defense? Assignment football, as they like to say, when defending the option. Van Lee picks up the first down by himself, and this Georgia Tech rushing attack right now like a machine. Time of possession. Here's Perkins, who had a touchdown earlier in the game. He picks up five. And that means they don't have to have near as much depth defensively does Georgia Tech. Badly gets out of the backfield, lost the football. Miami's got it. We've already seen the the art of ball security with young ball carriers. Van Lee on this play. We've already seen Duke Johnson, a sophomore as well, put it on the ground, but that was just stripped by number 78. Rimfro just getting a hand in, and it wasn't really a strip. Young ball carriers, it's not who you see, it's who you don't see. Take care of the Put forward, if you don't, you leave the ball high. That interception that he threw to the tight end down the seam, that was airmail. Georgia Tech brings pressure. Here's Duke Johnson. He gets a block, and Johnson's got some room. Finally bumped out of bounds by Brandon Watts at the 48-yard line, a 27-yard pickup for Duke Johnson. We go down to Nikki. You know, I keep asking the trainers for an update on Stephen Morris, and they keep telling me that he's fine, you guys, that he's not feeling anything. And I've watched him sitting on the training table with the other quarterbacks. After each drive, he goes up to receivers, and he talks to them, guys like Coley and Waters. He's clearly actively trying to up his own teammates. So we'll, we'll just see what happens with him. But for right now, he's not limping. The trainers are telling me he's just fine. Yeah, he is limping. I, I guarantee you that. I don't care what the trainers say, Nikki. I, I'm totally with you. But the bottom line is, is he is gimpy. And it doesn't matter until you have to transfer your weight into a throw. And the only one he's had to drive, he threw high, and it was intercepted. Here's Dallas Crawford in the game after a 12-yard run by Duke Johnson. Crawford bulldozes his way forward for a gain of eight. Finally brought down by Quayshon. Neely. Most center of gravity. Crawford's like a bowling ball when he comes into the game. Morris completes to Clive Walford, and he is good old reliable for this Miami offense. 19 of the last 21 times he's touched the football. It's been good for a first down or a touchdown, a first down this time. Hit the tight end in behind that second level. Miami still hasn't faced a third down in this game with 9.20 to go in the half. And you have to keep an eye on Walford deep in the red zone as well. He split up to the right side. Here's Dallas Crawford, follows his blockers, and he gets to the 12-yard line, a gain of three. Again, second down. Duke Johnson back into the game at running back. Morris finds Alan Hearns pushed out of bounds by Lewis Young. It's going to be first and goal for Miami after a gain of eight. You don't have as much field to cover. You have to close the cushion a little bit. Way too soft by Young on that play. Duke Johnson stays in the game despite two fumbles at this end of the field last week. Play action to Walford. Touchdown, Miami. Walford and you talk about a late bloomer he didn't start playing football until his senior year of high school and when Miami needs a conversion a touchdown a first down he has been their guy this season really came on strong toward the end of last season and for Walford that's his second touchdown of the year after four last season money down tight end quarterbacks love these guys down deep in the red zone 
here today. I think their offense is up to it. Their defense is going to have to find a way to get off the field. Short kick. Here's DeAndre Smelter. And Smelter tackled by a host of orange jerseys inside the 20-yard line last week. And that offense looked in sync, and it's oh, been in yeah. sync so far. It's scary. New quarterback for Georgia Tech. This is by design. Justin Thomas in the game. He's being chased. Thomas saludes the defender and gets out of bounds after picking up a first down. Shayon Green looked like he had an angle at him, but Thomas well, able to get away. They want to get him time today. There you see the diamond formation once again. And that time Georgia Tech keeps it on the ground. If you compare his skill set to A.J. McCarron, I think this is a great fit. Godhai juggles it, manages to hold on, and then picks up a first down. Robert Godhai gave some Georgia to Tech fans. You would certainly expect a snoop full of triple option out of Thomas. Here's David Sims barging through that defense, and he gets 11. Thomas still in the game. And there's the first down. David Sims gets forward progress as Georgia Tech continues to move the chains. Starter, Justin Thomas will play. Now, if Justin Thomas plays well, maybe you revisit that for next week. Thomas will keep it. And that's on a nice play by the Miami defensive lineman, Justin Renfro, the Virginia transfer. Second down. Yeah, Renfro is having himself a nice game right here. He does a very good job of stuffing the B gap right there, but keeping his feet and then pursuing the ball outside. Item number one, he had to be a big body in the B gap, but then you get extra effort out of 78 at 6'4, 320, actually about 6'6, 320. Found the little quarterback outside. Renfro, David Gilbert, and Ufamba Kamalu added to that Miami defensive line for some depth all transfers in the offseason Lasky can't haul that down that might be a fumble they didn't rule it right away and you pause but yeah that, that should be an incomplete pass and the quarterback Thomas really hangs Lasky out to dry a little bit with that screen way too much air under the screen we'll see what Justin Thomas brings to the table he's still in there the one pass he attempted just now was his first pass attempt of the season this is number two. Thomas Pumps throws downfield for Michael Summers, and he underthrew the football fourth down. Doesn't think Georgia Tech might be up to something here. And that goes out of the end zone as Sean Pools credited with a touchback, a 41-yard punt. No return. Miami ball from its own 20 when we come back. Welcome back to our All-State Game of the Week, all a part of Tailgate Week, fired up by Kingsford Charcoal. Miami ball down by three. The Hurricanes 20-yard line, time of possession, which some coaches will say is not a big deal, but boy, it's one-sided so far in this first half. Off play action, the short-handed Allen Hearns, and he's to midfield for Miami. This is a Georgia Tech team playing without starting safety, Jamal Golden, Isaiah Johnson. And Hearns had a vertical route outside of him. Watch the push-off right there. I still don't see that. Real aggressive transfer of weight. That was a well-thrown ball, but it's ones where he has to put a little touch on that tend to sail on you if your right ankle and a right-handed quarterback is ailing just a little bit. And a flag on the play. Miami wanted a free play. After two, in essence, offsetting penalties. Morris to the air. Wants Stacy Coley. And Coley out of bounds after another big game for Miami. Coley, a very decorated freshman coming to Miami, coming off his best game of the year. A very good back shoulder throw. This is difficult to do. That far downfield, very good touch pass by Morris. And Coley, the freshman, with a good feel on that back shoulder throw. That was impressive. Coley had a four-catch, 96-yard effort in the win against South Florida, including a couple of touchdowns. There's a quick screen to Hearns. Hearns slips the tackle, and Allen Hearns all 
the way down to the 15-yard line. The sure-handed senior with his third catch of the game. That's good for 13. And Miami doesn't do this quick Square screen on the outside defender and make a miss. D.J. White, number 28, the corner for Georgia Tech, just has to break down and make a tackle. Stare him in the belt and just go through his legs. Here's Duke Johnson, and he's tripped up in the backfield. And they say he is down, tackled by Jabari Hunt Days, second and ten after no game. And the that ball was a little jiggy right there as well. The fans were kind of thrown in again. Even though Johnson was on the ground, that ball was a little loose. Coley in the slot on second down. Morris instead dumps it out to Walford. And a good tackle there in space by Jamia. Cleveland was going to the corner in the back of the end zone, and in the outlet set, or the outlet receiver was Walford just standing out in the flat. This is the first third down attempt of the game for Miami, and it's with 90 seconds to go in the first half. Here's Johnson on the delay. He gets a first down, still fighting for extra yards. And I think they're going to give it to him on forward progress. Miami deciding to kick a field goal, a 24-yard attempt by Matt Gudis. Two for three on the season. His only miss, though, was a 23-yarder. And that one is good, and we're tied with 30 seconds to play in the first half here at Sunlight Stadium. Much improved defensively. Last year doesn't seem to be an aberration. I think that they're much improved defensively in 2013 as well. As are the two teams we're watching. Georgia Tech and Miami both had their struggles defensively a season ago, and both have improved considerably. Here's DeAndre Smelter. Smelter tackled inside the 20. That return game has been problematic for Georgia Tech, and they're also down their top return man, Jamal Golden. Out for the season with a and, shoulder injury. And Anish, that on special teams is where you really see the depth of speed and athleticism. 22 yards, and it appears he's just going to take a knee, and Georgia Tech is going to go to the locker room content with a 17 17 tie. These two teams played a barn burner last year in Atlanta. It was a Miami win in overtime, it was a back and forth seesaw game. This one tied at 17. Let's go down to the field. Nikki Noto with Paul Johnson. Coach Johnson, I know you said coming into this game, you wanted your option offense to create explosive plays, which we've seen. How has utilizing both Lee and Thomas at quarterback helped you in that manner? Well, you know, Justin had the one series. He did a nice job coming in. We've got to be more consistent. We had all the momentum going and then turned the ball back over. It was really a killer. Conversely, on defense, Coach, we just saw that Miami closed the gap, tied the ball game. How do you contain them in the second half? Well, both defenses are struggling a little bit right now, so whoever can get it fixed and play the best in the second half is going to win. Thanks, Coach. Those second half adjustments, we'll see what both coaches do when we come back for the third quarter, but now it's halftime, and here's Darinoka in the studio. All right, a good one in the ACC. Half. But really, they're not into long, lengthy drives. They're the type of team that's going to beat you with explosive plays and big plays. And they had four plays of at least 20 yards in that first half, two more for 19. Yeah, and that certainly illustrates the difference between the two offensive approaches that we see here today. Georgia Tech wants to per possess it. Miami's a big play team. Here's Duke Johnson, always a big play waiting to happen. Not this time, gobbled up at the 16-yard line. Stephen Morris on first down, incomplete intended for Alan Hearns, and we go down to where you have to move a little bit, plant on that right ankle, and then drive into the throw, and that ball came up short. Here's Duke Johnson on second down, and Johnson to the 20-yard line, a gain of three, and it's third down. You would coming to Stephen Morris right now, if I could. They're not a big pressure team, but I want him to have to move his feet to throw, but then you're worried about the back-ended coverage. 
This is your pressure guy right here, Atauchu. And there comes Atauchu. Morris just throws it up. And it's incomplete, nearly intercepted. Chris Milton, who already has Watch, one pick in this right game, here, just took a quick bad pressure. Out. Running back is going to come that way to block him. But watch how no ability to throw off that ankle at all. You see, he doesn't even want to. Three and out goes Miami on its opening drive of the second half. Here's DeAndre Smelter returning his first career punt, and not bad. The kid who came to Georgia Tech on a baseball Expect this young man to play extremely well here in the second half. Robert got high in motion. Lee will keep it on the option, takes a big hit, and then picks up an extra yard, give him three on the play. Second to Miami at that safety position. Here's a toss to Dennis Andrews. And Andrews stopped short of the line of scrimmage. Third down for the Yellow Jackets. And Anish, we've seen Bad Lee for two Inexplicably, the pre-snap penalties. Lee hit as he throws it. Going deep, and it's incomplete. Intended target, Michael Summers. He was double covered by Jenkins and Tracy Howard. With the short to medium pass game. Typically, they get into those long yardage situations and they just heave it as far as they can. Miami nearly got Sean Poole that time and this punt goes into and out of the end zone. Miami ball from its own 20. When we come back, we'll revisit last year's barn burner between these two. Last year when Miami and Georgia Tech faced off, the Yellow Jackets trailed at 19-0, but then they scored 36 unanswered. Tevin Washington led the charge. Mike James was clutch, scoring the touchdown to send the game into overtime, and then James, his fourth touchdown of the game. Miami getting the win in OT, 42-36. to The Canes have won four in a row against Georgia Tech, and Stephen Morris, at the time, a career-high 436 yards passing. He actually broke that record a week later against NC State, going for 566 yards. And Morris in this game, 9 of 12, a buck 65, two TDs, and an interception. Duke Johnson on first down, and Johnson gets three, second down, That's and very seven. well. They've had him mainly in pistol, just like he is right here in that shotgun formation. Johnson again up the middle to the 30-yard line. And it's going to bring up a third problem. down. Play action. Morris in trouble, and down he goes. Jeremiah Atauchu with the sack. We've been waiting to call his name. that guy that has to play huge in the second half. One of the best pass rushers in the nation. Luke Johnson will try to get some of it back on second down, and he does. Johnson to the outside, a first down for Miami. 20 yards on the play as Duke Johnson has over 100 yards in this game. Well, what a luxury to yeah. have two first down plays that didn't work well, but Johnson comes back and puts you in a great position on second down. Quick screen. Here's Dorsett. One touchdown already. He's bottled up by Lewis Young as he gets to midfield. Make sure the quarterback and the offensive lineman have a smooth transition, and they have so far this year. Play action again. Morris finds his man. It's Dorsett again. And Dorsett drags the tackler out of bounds. They spot him out at the 31-yard line. Dorsett had a big Morris game. to Dorsett. That's Dorsett in motion. He gets it on the sweep. Stutter step and Dorsett picks up two. Coverage and he's trying to play that soft coverage to keep two high safeties, which is typically a run alert for the offense. Maurice Hagens, the fullback, rumbling down to the 15 yard line, a gain of 15. Hagens, the big fullback. It's play action pass, and then he gets out into the flat really quickly. A lot of times that big fullback, you forget that he can figure into the passing game. A good job of Morris finding Hagen out into the flat in that particular play. Hagen's now in the backfield. Duke Johnson was split wide, and Hagen's gets the call. 
So they reward the fullback with a carry, and he takes it inside the 10 yard line, gives seven yards to Higgins on that run. There's Duke Johnson on second down. Johnson inside the five. And there is a flag on the play back at the 12-yard line. Here inside, you're going to get quick movement inside, and then the penetration actually is to the other side, and you can see the takedown. Very good, quick first step by Goddess. He's listed as the co-starter at center this week. Alan Hearns makes one man miss doesn't get very far. Third down coming Georgia up. Georgia Tech line. countered and checked out of it. With the play clock winding down, Morris gets rid of it, and he's intercepted. It's Quayshawn Neely, the linebacker. Neely across midfield and into Miami territory. Dallas Crawford made the tackle. Second interception of the game for Morris. Third turnover for Miami. Well, we saw Jameis Thomas come in on that blitz. And it was confusing right there to Morris. Number 54, Neely just steps in on it. Morris knew he didn't have time. Got caught looking at the pressure a little bit and forgot where the linebacker was. And Neely steps right in front of Waters. Not Neely. Right. Lee pitches it. And Jimmy Gaines with the tackle. Uh, Charles Perkins. Lee will keep it. Tries to get the edge, gets a block. Tony Zenon in motion. He gets it on the toss. Zenon might be the fastest player on this Georgia Tech team, but Ladarius Gunter erases him for a loss of five yards. See, I don't like the play call when you have the quick show of the ball, the pitch outside. Gunter sees that right away. And then remember, Miami's defense is fast. Lee throws it to God high, and he threw it too far. Third down. 231 have come on the ground. Passing down. Here's the pressure. Lee just chucks it out of bounds. Tracy Howard had a beat on it, but it's incomplete. DeAndre. So all three times that Georgia Tech has started in Miami territory, they have not scored, and that was dangerous. Sean Poole able to field the snap and let's not forget Georgia Tech some strong moments 14 of 18 208 yards but two interceptions in the game Duke Johnson it's all the way to the 30 for a gain of nine second down and serious as Johnson gets the call here on second and short, gets to the outside, picks up a first down. From what you've seen so far, how much do you think the ankle is bothering him? I think it's bothering sure, him. No doubt break. about it. You can see right there, he hasn't played much, and now he's on a bum right ankle. That's not a good situation. On the ground once again, a flag at the end of the play as Duke Johnson takes it for a couple. And I think pressure in this second half than they were at all in the first half. A lot of time for Morris, and that was nearly intercepted by a Tauchu. Waters, Hearns, and Dorsett, the three receivers in for Miami. Walford, the tight end. Morris under pressure. That's to Crawford, the running back. And he's tackled by a Tauchu at the 30-yard line after a gain of six. That was really good for him. the money down. Georgia Tech's defense has to find a way to get off the field. Miami looking for its first third down conversion of the day. This is only their fourth attempt. Yeah, that's the amazing part. Only their fourth third down situation on the afternoon. Meanwhile, Georgia Tech has 11. Morris to Hearns, and that's a first down. Hearns has one man to beat. Dorsett with the block and Hearns in for the touchdown.
that's certainly a potentially devastating play if you're Georgia Tech. You have them in third and forever, and you give up a long touchdown. Hearns and Dorsett to the same side of the field have given fits to Georgia Tech in the pass game. Point after is good, and Alan Hearns, who James Coley, the offensive coordinator, called his Magic Johnson. A little Miami magic, and the Canes have the lead. One receiver for this Hurricane football team in Miami. Up by seven with a minute 44 to go in the third quarter. Lynn Griffin getting the opportunity on the return. Let's go to the touchdown. Yeah, Hearns is in here and is actually going to run a corner route. Lewis right here has to understand he has help inside as a safety. So you have to give up that vertical route by Dorsett and break more quickly on that out route. It just wasn't very good communication in the secondary for Georgia Tech. And Stephen Morris, what a competitor, what a gamer, and what a big play at the right moment for Miami. Now let's see if Georgia Tech can answer. Sims on first down, picks up four, and it'll bring up second and six. Lee will keep it, and he gets about three more, so third down coming up for the Yellow Jackets. Five of them. And he blew up that play before it could get started. Lee options to got high just in time, but Chicolo led the pursuit, and it's fourth down. 57, fourth and three, Yellow Jackets punting when we start the fourth quarter. It's Miami by seven. Miami start of the fourth quarter here in South Florida Georgia Tech on to punt it away and pay attention to the snap here the long snapper Trevor Strobel is a true freshman this is his first start Sean Tobin the normal long snapper is out and the last snap to the punter was a wobbly one and it hit the ground this one's clean Dorsett muffs it Georgia Tech has it. Ball in the air. But once you feel like you can't get it, you have to bail out. You don't want to catch one down by your shoe tops. Wow, what a tremendous play if you're Georgia Tech. Four turnovers for Miami, and now Georgia Tech has to capitalize. No doubt. They've started three times in Miami territory and failed to score. This will be number four. Lee set. Shayon Green. That's his second sack of the year. And number 17 for that Miami defense. Sacks all of last year. The pass rush has improved. Lee again to the air. And that's hauled in on the far sideline by Darren Waller. Robert got high to the outside. That by Chicolo, no gain. Second down and ten. And a niche win is the last doing time. Now, if you can stop the fullback, you can turn the speed loose to get to the edge if you're deep Miami's defense. Sinjin Days with the ball, former quarterback. He'll keep it and run. And Days to the 25-yard line. He gets six. Days in A back, but he was the third string quarterback a year ago. And there's an injured Miami player. It's Casey Rogers, the second in a row. This could be four down territory. And there's the fullback getting the call for a pickup of three. It'll bring up fourth and two. Taker in the middle is the fullback. Fullback in the middle to the perimeter right here. I would think triple option right here for Bat Lee. Yellow Jackets two for two on fourth down. There's Sims. Second effort, did he get it? I think he did get it. I think he's just inside the 21-yard line, and 
A better two-yard run you will never see. The pressure the football. That diamond formation once again. Out of the diamond look. Lee looks to throw to the end zone. Incomplete. Darren Waller, the intended target. Waller, the... Consistently great. good in terms of decision-making in that part of the game. Lee keeps it, now pitches. Got high. Jimmy Gaines credit, credited with the tackle after. With the potential to go for it on fourth if they need to. Got to get to the 10. Here's Lee, first down and more. First and goal, Georgia Tech. Lee gets nine, he's down to the five. Gaines on the stop. Zen in motion. Here's Sims, untouched into the end zone. And Georgia Tech, an extra point from Tigan. Georgia Tech kind of get into the rhythm of the drive, and it ends up in the end zone. The freshman Butker missed it. A bad snap, and Georgia Tech unable to tie it up. Points of the direction that the laces were. Sean Poole on the low snap didn't think he had time to spin the laces out of there, and it cost the team. We just had a laces out moment in Miami. East Ventura revisited. Duke Johnson across the 30-yard line. Laces out, Finkel, you remember. I do not remember, so don't even quiz me on where you're going. Underneath <laughs> the center right here, this is where he's had issues, is having to get back in ball handling. Walford in motion. Johnson breaks the tackle, and he's to the 40-yard line. Second and four after a pickup of six, and Johnson, who's got the reputation as reputation, the home run hitter, the speedy guy, he can break some tackles and get in there and run between the tackles as well. It's like the medium passing game for them right now. When they get into second and need a play, Duke Johnson's come through for them. Johnson again. And he's got a first down for Miami. And Duke Johnson. Lie on the right ankle of my quarterback. One more time, it's Duke. You know, Anish, Georgia Tech's Duke defense. Johnson stays in the game. Bleeding the clock. Yeah, as Dorset we come up on nine minutes. and Hearns down to the same side. Johnson the call for the fourth straight time. And he's in the Georgia Tech territory. It'll be third and short. He had 186 yards in the season opener against FAU. Up to 134. And why not? Duke again. And he stretches for the first down time off that play clock last time it was snapped with 24 seconds going way too fast here's Crawford and he gets a yard it's been all yeah. runs on uh, this drive snapped the ball from this point out getting down to about 10 seconds as he looks to the sideline this is more like it I would get under five First pass of the drive, Morris on the run. He's got Coley, and it's the freshman with a big game for Miami, first and goal Hurricanes. Well, Coley's gonna run a deep over route from one side of the field all the way to the other. Takes a lot of time. Remember what's happening in the backfield as Stephen Morris is sprinting out to one side with that gippy right ankle. The gamer throws a dart down the field. Three catches, 74 yards for the true freshman, Stacy Coley. Here's Dallas Crawford. Plows his way across the goal line. Is he in, though? No signal just yet. Nope, not quite across. A drive finisher. Crawford is that guy. Red zone, short yardage, goal line. I think they want, certainly Miami players want that review. Val Gold wants to review it, cost him a timeout, and then they get to the replay booth. I think that's exactly what we're going to see. I didn't hear clearly whether this is just a booth review 
Knees still not down. Knees down there. Ooh. The ball was out, but he gains possession. I think that's a touchdown. He loses possession, but he's over the goal line when he regains the possession, and he's the only player that can do that. After further review, it is a touchdown. And I think Crawford was going to be good either direction. Yeah. Before a knee was down, I think he crossed the goal line, but then he recovered essentially his own fumble anyway. I think that's a good job of using the replay properly, and they ended up at the right play. is good it's an eight point game a lot of runs from duke johnson and then stephen morris to stacy coley and that's it up dallas crawford for further review a touchdown the division title needs this game down by eight here's lynn griffin as the yellow jackets hopefully spark on special teams not that time. You look at the ACC closely. Worst starting field position of the game for the Yellow Jackets. Zach Lasky powers his way up the middle and a first down for Paul Johnson's team, a gain of 15. When you forget about the... Lee's going to throw. He's in trouble. Chased by Ciccolo. Lee chucks it up out of bounds. Good pressure that time by Anthony Ciccolo, a legacy Miami player. Both his dad and grandfather played there was at the nothing U. there for Van Lee. Lead of the air again. Pressure from the outside. He's hit as he throws it. And it's caught by Waller at the 40-yard line. Nice catch downfield by the sophomore from Ackworth, Georgia. First and ten, it's Lasky who gets the call, and he gets three, second down and seven. God high in motion. Lee again to throw. Nice block by God high. This is for Smelter. Incomplete. Ladarius Gunter, big physical quarterback, got in there to knock it away. Van Lee had Smelter. It's just a poor throw. Too much air under the ball. That ball needed to be driven the in. Two there. runs, no doubt, was on the mind of Paul Johnson. A throw. Lee in trouble. And that's incomplete. God high got it on a hop. Fourth down. If you're going to throw the ball, this is the matchup with Waller outside. The Georgia Tech is light. There's the pressure. Lee throws it, and it's intercepted. Ray Sean Jenkins gets the pick, and it's Miami football. Well, we talked about Bad Lee's chemistry with Waller. Over the top coverage by Howard, and underneath comes Jenkins. That's what you do if you know the quarterback has a go-to favorite target. You could see the animated Paul Johnson was pointing to the other side of the field. The read should have taken Van Lee to the opposite side. And it's Miami football with 5.15 left in the fourth. Duke Johnson on first down. Yes, Henry Wall picks up three. Remember, not all is lost. We're just seeing Johnson around that right side, and he's got a first down for Miami, shedding tacklers to the 46-yard line of Georgia Tech. And Duke Johnson closing in on 160 yards rushing. When offensive coordinator James Coley has needed a, a good play, a dependable play, Duke Johnson has been that guy, particularly on second down. He's gashed Georgia Tech's defense. Here is Duke Johnson again, and he's to the 41. 
same type of situation, I think, on second down if you against stop Miami's them. run game. They don't expect the ball to be in the air. It's Duke Johnson across the 40. And he's going to be close to another Miami first down. It's this third This is basically short. the game right here. Georgia Tech crowds the box. Johnson to the outside. He's got a first down. And Duke Johnson into the red zone inside the 20, a gain of 18 yards. And with that run, he's just a few yards away from a new career high. Productive running backs have great vision. There wasn't much at the point of attack in the box, but watch the bounce. Point of attack is blocked. Oh, I see some green grass to the left. And if you have the speed to get there, Duke Johnson has just that. Tremendous run right there by number eight. A hundred. Here's Crawford. He breaks through and into the end zone, and that should do it. TD of the game for Dallas Crawford and after being down 17 to 7 Miami answered by scoring 31 of the next 37 points Let's take a look at today's good hands play brought to you by Allstate A couple of long touchdown passes Stephen Morris in the first quarter Finding Philip Dorsett you won't see better hands than that And then Alan Hearns Sheds the tackle Gets some help from Dorsett downfield with the block. Kelly, big plays by this Miami offense really hurt Georgia Tech. They could not slow down the explosive plays downfield. Yeah, and Ted Roof do just that. But James Coley, his MO offensively is to take shots, get down the field vertically, and then hand the ball off to number eight, Duke Johnson. And Morris has performed courageously on a really gimpy. Morris in this game, 17 of 22, 324 yards, three TDs, two interceptions. Question now for Georgia Tech, maybe. Is Van Lee the guy going forward at quarterback two games in a row where had, he struggled? You just had to bring that up, didn't you? But you're exactly right. I think that's a, an honest question. They'll have to score some points tonight against Ole Miss. Justin Thomas in the game. Quarterback, down he goes. The ball comes out. Lasky able to recover. And he's tackled by Tyreek McCord. Wow, Tyreek McCord, 6'3", 235-pound sophomore, is their third down rush guy. You have to pass it. Boom. Watch out for 17. McCord's been an impact player for this defense. Had an interception the last two weeks. Forced a critical fumble in the Florida win. That's floated up. Lavarius Gunter is going to run this back. Second interception for Ladarius Gunter, the junior from Montgomery, Alabama. 6'2", 196, big physical kid. He's made some good plays in this game and gets to run in for a touchdown. But I think you saw today they made some adjustments. They're much better on the defensive line of scrimmage. When you're better on the line of scrimmage, your entire defense is better. Kelly, I'll revisit the Georgia Tech question after Justin Thomas threw an interception for the Yellow Jackets on the last drive. Lynn Griffin takes it across the 30, and he's to about the 47-yard line. 101 to go in the game. 
but it sets the table for what Georgia Tech wants to do offensively. We saw Van Lee against Duke. As Dennis Andrews picks up a first down and more across the 40-yard line. We that saw that second guy. It's one thing. When you're the first guy and things go wrong, you come in and change up duties. It's a different planet than if you're the starter and the game plan success revolves around you. So Georgia Tech going to its second loss in conference. That and I think that's the key. He said we're building and we're still adding layers. The translation is that we're still building depth, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. He gets and to Miami, Georgia, you've got the whole Nevin Shapiro thing, which is still unresolved. The NCAA has yet to rule on what Miami's sanctions will be. The Hurricanes have already self-imposed a postseason ban the last two years. As Byerly tries to get out of trouble. Al Golden built the Temple program. Took it from the gulags, and he said, I want to bring about a culture change to Miami. And even when Miami had a winning culture, you get the sense from talking to him, that might not be the exact culture he wants to duplicate. Absolutely. That's a great point. And one thing that struck me, he talked about little things like this. When they took over here, they, they would do a conditioning test. When he was at Temple, when he left there, everybody passed the conditioning test. When he showed up here, half of the players flunked the first con conditioning test. The second time they did it, 30% flunked. He said, the third year we did it, they were laughing at my conditioning test. That means progress. Year. He was gimpy through two games a year ago as well. They need him healthy, and they certainly are gonna be in the middle of the ACC. Burn in, break that losing streak. For Georgia Tech, the gauntlet continues. This is their fourth game and a stretch of eight consecutive games. They go two. And so that young man needs to get healthy in her. A touchdown for the third string quarterback, Byerly. And Georgia Tech adds six more. Just bookkeeping at this point with 10 seconds left. <laughs> Stephen Morris today, 17 of 22, 324 yards. Did throw a couple of picks, but had three interceptions in, in his career. He's played well against Georgia Tech, 436 yards last year. As a true freshman against the Yellow Jackets, 230 yards and a touchdown in a 35-10 Miami win. And that ankle was certainly bothering him, and he made a couple of errant throws that were actually pretty poor decisions, but you talk about how he battled through that ankle. That's difficult to do all of your mechanics properly, and when you don't feel well, sometimes you don't make the best decisions either. That young man battled through and had a tremendous day. He showed up, and it took a lot of pressure off of his quarterback. The only mystery left in this game is whether Duke Johnson can take this kickoff back, and the reason that's of some significance, Johnson has had a touchdown in eight straight games, has not scored today despite a superlative effort. Yeah, and Al Golden was out on the field telling whoever gets it to fair catch it if it gets back to them. So <laughs> Mystery I don't think Science that's going to happen. Is over. Miami today averaged more than 10 yards per play, 552 yards of total offense. They did turn it over quite a bit, but their defense did force three turnovers as well. With Florida State's win against Maryland earlier today, one ACC team knocked from the perch of the undefeated. But there you go. There's your undefeated in the ACC. Florida State and Clemson, they're on a collision course. Those two will play October 19th, two weeks from now in Death Valley. And then you've got Miami lurking in the Coastal Division with a 5-0 mark. Let's go down to the field and Nikki Noto. Coach, congratulations on the win. It was a battle out there on both sides of the ball. Let's focus on the positive. What strengths did you see out there in the grid of your team today? Well, number one, anytime you play Paul Johnson in Georgia Tech, it's we, you know what you're in for. You know what you're in for. Uh, we were too sloppy with the football to run away from it, okay? 
but our guys hung in there. I learned a lot about our football team today. I'm proud of them. Our defense in the second half, great adjustments by Coach D'Onofrio in the defense, executing them in the second half. We really did a nice job in the second half, and obviously we made some plays when we had to. Coach, you're 5-0. This hasn't happened since 2004. What can you say about where your program goes from here? I mean, you just won your ACC opener. Well, we're 1-0 today. That's it, you know. Tomorrow we got to come back, go to work. we got to become, you know, process-oriented. We can't have any distractions. All right, we're in here for a long haul, and it's, a, it's one day at a time, one game at a time, but uh, learned a lot about our team today, and I'm so excited to get back here and get, get working tomorrow. Thanks a lot for your time, Coach. Thank Drew. you. And on point, Miami takes care of business at home against Georgia Tech and wins its ACC opener. Sports Center U is next. They'll preview the Ole Miss-Auburn game. We go to the studio in Darien.